One of the most important things in life, we need relationship. If we don't have relationship, we're not going to be able to make it. Because what we call life, people used to refer to my life as like my life. I'm talking about my own life. I'm not talking about people, my life. But the real truth is, nobody has their own life. It's our lives. We're all connected on this earth. And we need to work together. If we cannot work together, we will not accomplish anything together. Uh, accomplish anything by ourselves. And another thing is, we were not designed to work alone. We were, we, God didn't create us to work alone. You know, God is the Trinity. God says in Genesis, let's create mankind that reflect us. God never walked one day without Jesus and without the Holy Spirit. They all work together. Jesus said that I never done anything that my father ever done. I never go anywhere that my father don't ask me to go. I never speak anything my father don't ask me, don't ask me to speak. And Jesus, when he get baptized, when John Baptist baptized Jesus, at the, before he started his ministry, the Holy Spirit come upon him. The Holy Spirit was always with Jesus. Is that not amazing? So we are the perfect reflection of the Trinity, which is the perfect unity team ever existed in, in all existence. So we call to work together. When we work together, what do we find? We find joy, peace. We find like um, we be, we empower one another. We're not alone, and we find that we find direction because it's not only your way and your voice, but you get other people's input. And when you get other people's input, you you most likely to be succeed. Yes, input from wise people. Don't go get input from a drunk guy on how to stop smoking. He ever succeed in that, for sure. You go from, get input from someone that know either live that life and succeed, and then so they can help you work out. So you need to be wise in getting input from you men, from people. But we were not meant to walk this life alone. But what happened? Culture divided us. Have you ever taken a moment to think like, this is, have you ever, any of you think like, oh man, this is my black brother tonight. Have you think about that? Probably not yet. Now you're thinking about it here, yeah, so we went here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I am your brother. Yes. But you don't, you don't know that, you don't think that. Because all you're thinking, I am Mexican. Or I am American. Oh, I am American in America, but Mexican American. So you still divide yourself. Even you're born in America, and you, you have another race or something. The culture divides us in every aspect of life. When really, God came so we can unify. Jesus came so we can unify. Why it's so important? David life has something so important for you to know. Isaiah life has something so important that will help your life to be better. And each one of us has something we can contribute in each other's life. But if we're divided, we're alone. And the world becomes the most depressing place ever for us. And you don't have purpose, you don't have energy, you don't have like this passion to keep going in life. Because you're walking alone. And no one meant to walk alone. I, 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 my name is Philipson, and I know you guys know that. You saw it up there on the screen before, and right now it's, it's boring. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I, I'm leading a ministry in, in Carpathian. It's a place in Haiti. I'm from Haiti. I was born and raised in Haiti my entire life, and, um, and I'm leading a ministry in the north of Haiti right now, about like 20, 30 people plus, I don't know. People have been coming, and I don't know, but because I'm here. Um, and I've been working with YRAM, which stands for Youth with a Mission. And one day, i give you guys a little bit of that so you can get a little background of like where I'm going with that. One day, I, I did, I, I was in Hawaii. That's where I do my 
my leadership training, learning how to lead a Waran base and start a, start a ministry. And there's a Waran base in Kona, Hawaii. That's where we, me and my wife would go there and spend two years. Um, and I was in the back of a car talking to God. I was looking at the Hawaiian people in Hawaii. There's every, everybody go there. It's like one of the most amazing places in the world, really. And people are nice, they say hi to each other. Like you might have like a father or a grandparent that never say hi to anybody, always me. They go to Hawaii, they change completely. They say, they say, hey, hi. Why? Because in Hawaii, in Hawaii the culture is you say hi. You, you smile at the person next to you. So culture is funny. It's funny. It's very funny to see. Culture defines how we need to live our life. And the moment we step into the culture, we start living life like the culture. If you go to Haiti right now, about six months, you're going to start living life as a Haitian. And if you come to America, you, you have to live like an American, right? Like, you can try to keep your culture as much as you can, but at the end of the day, you're living life, life like an American. The same if you go to China, you, you cannot bring your culture there. You need to start adopting that culture. So, in mm -hmm. Hawaii, the culture is more peaceful. It's more like the best people go to relax and they take its level of spirituality and stuff like that. It's really cool there. And God called me to start that ministry, guys. And, and I had a big issue in my heart. The issue is, I know that Jesus says, I call you to be like me, Philipson. And I agree, I want to be like Jesus. But there's one thing about Jesus I cannot do. Jesus loves everyone. How the heck did he do that? Everyone. He even loved Judas. He knew that dude was going to kill him. He loved him. I'm like, have you ever think about that story, how crazy it is? Oh, yes, is I going to kill me, so I'm going to take his eye everywhere I go and keep him next to me until he can. Are you kidding me? Like, <laughs> how stupid is that? Like, who do that? But Jesus loved Judah so much like each of the disciples. He never left him. He always stayed by his side, by him. Even he knew he was, he was going to destroy him. Okay, I'll take a break of that story because... I need to fix that for you guys because so you know Jesus' intention. Do you guys know why Jesus kept Judah next to him the entire time? Even he knew he was going to betray him. And he'd say that all the time. Do you guys know why? Anybody have an idea why? Get, I know you have ideas, guys. <laughs> your teenager, your mind is going... <laughs> <laughs> you have ideas. Like, tell me, what is your ideas? Like, yeah. Like, he knew the purpose behind it ultimately. Like, um, think when you know the purpose behind something. Yes. Kind of look for the best in the situation. Yes, but how selfish would Jesus be? If you know he's going to make that mistake and then he has no way of running away from that mistake, the best way to keep him out of that mistake is stay away of him. That would be very selfish, right? Mm -hmm. So I think about that too. Jesus tell me why he keep him, by the way. Nobody else tell me. And when he told me, I was like, oh man, that's so true. And I was in a quiet time and he told me. But I'm going to tell you guys, I want somebody else to try. Because what you said, I think about it, and I'm like, Jesus, I don't want to follow a God like that. Like, I, that's selfish. That, that's manipulation. Like, I know that me and you, we're going to end up, like, destroying each other at the end, and then I keep you next to me. When we watch a movie like that, you hit the guy, right, in the movie. Like, you're like, man, he's such a betrayer. And he's such a, that's what they call spy, like the good betrayers. Like, <laughs> like, like, such a bit way. We, and we, deep inside, we don't like them. Uh, even the good spy, we, but we don't like them. We don't want that spy to spy on us or something else. No. And give me another thing. Give me something else. Maybe to love on him to try to avoid what was going to happen. Try to avoid what, is, what was going to happen. Maybe. That's, that's not what he told me, but maybe. And I think maybe there's a million ways it could happen. And I don't know, but it. I, I want to hear other things. John? Uh, I think to show and to let Judas know that he loves him. Yes. Regardless. Yes. Because in the end, he said, go and do what you must do. Like. Yes. You know. You're 50% there. This is true. Why, why is he any less deserving of love than anybody else just because of what he's going to do? You know what I mean? Like, just maybe Jesus thought that. Like, he deserves love just like everybody else does. That's true. That's true, too. 
That's part of the big picture and the big plan, but not the sin of the thing. Like what my dad said, kind of like a demonstration. That's what dad? Kind of like <laughs> <laughs> That's what awesome. I didn't know that. Okay, I love your yeah. little brother. He's so awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Everybody go eat the last week. It was awesome. Yeah, yeah. okay. <laughs> like a demonstration of like the love that God has and like kind of with the message we had this morning in church with like um, like sins in general where it's like God knew like everyone was going to sin and like he was going to die on the cross for that. But like kind of demonstrating his love in a way, um, I don't know. Yeah, that that's that that's true. Let me say it now. Whoever was gonna was gonna betray Jesus it was the prophecy, and someone was gonna betray it, betray him. Had how, how did Jesus know someone was gonna betray him? Because he lived the future already. Like people said, Jesus is selfish, so you think he's gonna go and change the future and keep changing the future? No, he knows the future, and Jesus' goal was to give you that way out. And that way out is after he betrayed him, he wanted him to know for sure that he can be forgiven. Mm. So he can ask forgiveness, and Jesus' goal was for Judah to be in heaven with him. Mm. That's crazy. He was not looking to get himself out of what Judah is going to do at all. He knows Judah was not strong enough and he knows that he couldn't escape himself from doing that. But Jesus' goal was, I'm going to preach forgiveness so much and I'm going to show him so many people I forgive. You know, the, the, the woman, the, the Jezebel woman, the, the, the prostitute woman, he did all of those things and he's like, I'm going to do so much in front of him that he will know that what he did will be forgiven. He showed him that. He told Peter, you're going to deny me. What did, you, what did Judah do? Judah denied Jesus. Peter denied Jesus. Two people that do the exact same thing, but take completely different direction. Denying is the worst thing ever. Imagine I walk to you, and I'm your brother, and then June said, you're in danger, and he said, is he his brother? I said, no, I never met him. I mm -hmm. never know him. I don't even know. You see, I'm black. The guy is like, let's say we both <laughs> adopted brother, right? I'm black. The guy is like, color skin. He's probably Mexican West. I don't know. Have you ever seen a black guy like with brother of a white guy? No way. And everybody would believe. No. Yeah, yeah, that's stupid. Yeah, you can go. How would you feel? Mm. You'd be like, holy see. <laughs> That's crazy! <laughs> like, you know that? Let me do that! That will kill you before you get killed! The blood that you love just denied. Peter did exactly the same thing that, Ju that Judah did. Judah sell Jesus to be killed? Peter denied Jesus to be killed. Both of them let him go. But Peter asked forgiveness after Judah killed himself. But wait, look at it. Peter is the person that got, Jesus said, I'll build my church upon your legacy. The men that deny Jesus. John loved Jesus. He always with Jesus. He's always on his shoulder on top of Jesus. The, when, you read, when you study the gospel, you see John was always sitting next to Jesus. His relationship with Jesus was like two amazing friends. Jesus building his church up on Peter's legacy. But Peter is the one that denied him. Jesus didn't care about our sins and our mistakes. What he cared about is that we will walk in forgiveness. That's going to take everything like, let's put that together. I want you guys to know that because it's a really hard thing for people to come with an answer. Why did Jesus let that happen to Judah? And, and, and so you guys know tonight what Jesus told me, you can say, I take his death, and I, honestly, I take 100% is because he wanted to give him a way out to ask forgiveness. Okay, I'm in the back of that kind corner, and then I said, Jesus, I don't know how to love everybody. There is people guys I love. I will, I will die for those people, my wife, my kids, my family. I have three friends. I know if they're in danger, and I need to put my life at risk to die for them, I can Without a doubt, I can. There is some people, even you give me $1 million to go spend some time with them, I want. 
And I said, Jesus, you know that. You know me better than anybody. You know, that guy, I hate him. That dude, I hate him. I'm not going to tell people that, but I hate him. That guy, I don't like the way he do anything, and I don't want to spend any time with him. Like, how did you love everyone? And you call us to live like you. You call me to start a mission. You call me to preach the gospel. And then you tell me to love everyone. And then I know I cannot love everyone because that, I'm, that would be selfish. What did Jesus tell me? He said, well, people said it's because you don't understand why you need to love them. I said, Please enlighten me. <laughs> I want to know. I want to know why I need to like the guy that scared me to death and I know can kill me and steal all my money. I want to know why. <laughs> like, enlighten me with something I didn't know. Do you know what he told me? He said, Do you know why I love everyone? I said, Why? He said, How can I hate myself? Mm. I'm like, What, what, what? what do you mean? How can I hate myself? I'm like, what does that mean? What, what Jesus said, well, you always see yourself as a creation of me, but you never pay attention that I put my life in you. You are part of me. You are a puzzle, a piece of my character. You are a part of me. You are a, you are a part of Jesus, the Trinity body. That's why God goes to the length of sending his son to die for you. Because he was not dying for some creation. He was not dying for the goats, for the pig, for the cows. He will never do that. He don't care about those ones. He died for you because he is in you. You were created with his image. You have God's DNA, DNA, uh, DNA. DNA in you. He said, I put my life in you. Everything else he said, B, they happened. You, he injected himself in you. And then this is what he, this is the, the story he tells me. He said, it was fun, Philip, when I was created human. I, uh, God, I, God had the idea and he said, let's create human in our likeness. And he was like, oh my gosh, that would be awesome. We create all this world and the galaxies and all those things. And, and it's beautiful. But if we create ourselves, multiplying ourselves to live in it, that will be awesome. Like, how many of you will not be happy to create like 20 other Isaac and, okay. and 20 other John and like 1,000 other John and you look at like, this is how exact thing. Oh my gosh, look at me. Like, I am like, I'm doing this and this. It was like the best idea ever because they create so many things. Look at the earth. It's an infinite being have created this. From like, things you can see with your eyes to things you cannot see. And he said, let's create something in our likeness. He said, oh my gosh. And he said, I'm so, I said, well, why do you let us die? And, and why you don't, we, after we die and accept you, why don't you bring us back to life like, like the same person? And he said, Philipson, we are so much. God is so big. He said, I can't even extend it because your brain cannot understand it. It's, it was not created to understand the greatness of God. You just have a glimpse of it. The angels, they have a glimpse of it. And he said, even they, they, they have a glimpse of God only. And he said, we have so much in our character, we can like populate the earth and the galaxies. With people, each of them have one, carry one character of us. Something special about us, they carry. And he said, but now you, if you choose to not love them, you miss out on getting to know me. Did you know, like, your lack of commitment to build an awesome relationship with the person next to you is you missing out on getting to know who God is and how fun is God? That's like, oh my gosh. And the first thing I think is like, I cannot know everybody in the world, but I was ready to. And God said, well, everybody that I bring in your circle, in your circle of network, if people that I know have did something that will help you be a better me. 
don't miss out. And I'm, oh, that's so awesome. That's wonderful. That's amazing. Lowen, you need to be best friend with Rachel and best friend with Madison and best friend with Isai. And throughout life, you guys can strengthen each other. The more we bring in that circle, the more pe you, you, you pour out that life and that true love into other people, the more you gonna become a better person yourself. And the more you're gonna be more like Jesus yourself. Mm. Incredible. Guess what I did? I was like a little kid. I sat on the deck of the mission and there is like a street right across in front. I saw a guy passing, and I, it's an older guy, and he's looking at the, <laughs> that was the next thing I do after that conversation with God. He's looking at the mission with a woman, and the woman is like, um, she's Polynesian, uh, it, she's Asian, like, um, and then they're like in 50s or more. And then he's looking, I said, oh, there's probably someone that want me to get to know. <laughs> and I said, hey, mister! And I'm calling him a cross from my from the mission that a cross if the street where there's like hundreds of people passing by. And then he's in the other side of the street. Mm -hmm. Like basically standing here, calling someone in the other side of that street. But I was up in the second storage of the of the building. And he's like, I said, How are you? And he's like, Are you talking to me? And I said, Yes, you. I said, how are you? And he said, oh, I'm awesome. And I said, would you like to come see in here? And he's like, no. I said, are you sure you've been looking at it for like five minutes? And everybody in the city is like, who's that black guy? There's not much black people in Hawaii. There's like maybe four or five. Like, there's not that much. You know, just see them often. And, and you will hear one yelling all the course. Like, and I said, yeah, come in. And he said, I said, then why have you been looking at it so much? And then everybody in the mission was like, what's going on? You know? He said, well, I had my first date here. He was a hotel before. Very back in the day with my wife. And I'm like, oh, would you like to see what it looks like today? <laughs> and he's like, uh, no, what is it? I said, it's a mission. It's doing amazing things all around the world. And then people are like, right now, he's like, there's like more than 40 people in the conversation watching it, seeing what's going to happen with that older guy and that black guy. And then I said, come in, come in. And he looked at me and said, you want to go see? And she's like, let's go in. And I said, come in, come in. We leave your first date another time. And then he, he walked in. I go downstairs, open the door, and I bring him and I said, okay, this is, this is what we do. I'm giving him a tour of the mission. In my mind, I'm thinking, God, I finally pushed to get to know him. What is it? Like, what do you want me to know? What, what is it? And then uh, we're talking, I'm showing him, I will show him the office of the director of the mission, like a complete stranger, I walk in the office with him, I show him everything. And then after he's like, you're awesome, you're kind of awesome and crazy at the same time. And I said, yeah, because I'm telling him a story about what the mission is doing. And I said, and he said, where are you from? And I said, I'm from Haiti. And he's like, Haiti in the Caribbean. And I said, yes. He's like, he looked at his wife and the guy started bowling, crying. And I'm like, oh no, what happened? Hmm. And almost sound like somebody not him like me. <laughs> and, then, and then I and I said, is everything okay? And then I put him to sit and we sit and he's like crying, bawling crying. I'm like, what's going on? And he said, oh man, Philip's a girl from Haiti, man? And I said, yes, it's like, I've been supporting a group of people in Haiti for three years. To, to print in Bibles and give to the people of Haiti. I sent them $3,000 and then they stole it. And he said, today, I was in my last conversation with them and I said, if you guys don't give me that money back, I will never support Haiti for the rest of my life. And then they said, I saw it. We lose the money, we cannot give it to you. And then he said he was so mad and tell his wife he will never support Haiti before again, ever. And then his wife said, "What if we go on a walk? Let, let's go on a walk. Let's let's kind of like it, let's go on a walk." And she took him in a walk. Guess who he met? <laughs> you. 
the only Haitian guy in the entire Hawaii. Okuna, Hawaii. Incredible. Do you see the importance of relationship? Do you see the importance of getting some, getting to know sometimes a random person and you have no idea how much you're willing to know? And then the moment he told me that, I was like, okay, God probably want me to ask forgiveness to, on behalf of Haiti. And I say, sir, I'm just so sorry. On behalf of Haiti, I want to ask forgiveness and, and blah, blah. I ask him forgiveness, a thousand forgiveness. Because it's big <clears throat> if someone is denying a nation from their feelings of, in, of anger and madness without paying attention to what God can do with them in that nation. You're courting a lot of opportunities. You know, like, and, but our emotion can make us take decisions that will hurt us so much. And, and I felt like that was not God designed for him to say that and commit to like hate Haiti for the rest of his life. I asked him forgiveness and he said he forgive. And he cried. And he knows, and he knows he's supposed to forgive because he meet me. He said this is impossible. <laughs> it, it, it's impossible for that to happen. I know God wanted me to meet you. And I said, and the guy have hated it multiple times back in the day. And I'm like, oh my God, that's so awesome. He used to work for Google and stuff like that. He's telling me, he used to send like audio device in Haiti. And I said, and he said, hey, how can I help you? you you're going to start a mission in Haiti. I said, yes. He said, can I help you financially? And I said, oh, I have zero money to go start our ministry. I said, we will say no to that. <laughs> yes. You can help me financially if you feel led to. And I said, but are you not scared? Like, you know, somebody just told them, and he said, no, no, I, I know I know God is working with you. And then he said, how about I donated $4,000 to your ministry? Like, oh my gosh. And I said, I'm not starting until a year and a half from now. And he was like, it's fine. And then he signed a check, $4,000. Hmm. He gave to me. I'm like, oh my God. And then after that, I go once in a date with him, with his wife, and then me and my wife, we, we take him, and then it's all. So in my little mind, I think like, God is done. That's what he wanted to do with that guy. He's done. You know, we, 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 we take things and we make decisions according to everything. I never reach out to him again and stuff. Months later, God told me, there's a, there's a, a, a storm that hit Haiti. God told me to go and feed 1,000 family in Haiti. 1,000 family can be up to 7,000 people. Like every parent, every dad and man have like lowest four to six kids, seven kids. And then, God told me you need to buy this and this and this. At that time, I was doing a Bible school and I was shot $1,000 and they give me two weeks. If I don't pay it, I need to leave the school. I'm like, I need money like crazy. God tell me everything I need to I need to distribute and that will it work. And he said, you need a team with you. And I said, oh man, what I need to do? When I calculate how much money I need, guess how much money I need to make that that mission trip in two weeks. Okay. I never met one like that before. 65,000 US dollars. In two weeks. I'm struggling for 1,000 to pay my school. And I'm about, they're about to kick me out of the school. And now God tell me to believe for 65,000. Mm. That was a Friday morning. I was in the prayer time. God told me that. I go talk to my leaders. I'm hoping that if it's not God, they're going to tell me no. All of them said, I feel it's God. We, if you can catch up in this, in your studies in the school, we'll give you the two weeks. I'm like, oh no! If my leader tell me no, now I don't have to struggle that I don't listen to God. <laughs> I'm fine with that. Like, if I make a mistake I, by obeying my leaders, I'm fine. Like me, I'm fine. All of them agree. And the most, they try to kick me out for money. Now they agree for me to go in a mission trip. So not related. Nothing related. And I said, it's going to cost $65,000. And then the leader said, hey, God's going to provide you with that. I'm like, I'm struggling for $1,000 for my shit. He's like, yeah, 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 but if God tells you to go, I, he can provide for that. I'm like, oh, man, don't understand. It's in two weeks. They're like, yeah, 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 yeah. You, 
if God tell you, you need to believe God. Next day, my head is exploding. I don't know what to do. I have $65,000 to waste. I have to build a team to go to a mission trip in two weeks. When people build in a year in advance, six months in advance to do any mission trip, because everybody is walking, you know, you cannot just build a team in two weeks to go to Haiti for two weeks. And then I don't know what to do. I say, okay, I need to watch a movie. I need to get my head away. I go to Netflix. I'm starting watching a movie. I'm laying in the bed. My wife was like, I said, I can't take it. I need to watch a movie. While I'm watching that movie, and I have anything to do with God, nothing to do with God, God tell me, take your phone, call that family in the street. Ask them if you can donate the $4,000 to give you to the mission trip because you said you don't have any money. I'm like, that's the only $4,000 I have to build the mission I'm going to launch. Now God, you tell me to give it away? And he said, yes. You need to do the possible so you can see me do the impossible. And I said, okay, get my phone, call the guy. I said, hey, can you release the $4,000 and you do that to me so I can, I explain him the thing and he's like, hey, Philip, so I remember you telling me you don't have any money. Do you have more now for the mission? I said, I have zero. Still that $4,000. He's like, you really want to give that away? I said, yes. And he said, so how are you going to replace it? I have no idea. Like, but I know God told me to give it away. So if you agree with me, because I cannot use, we never, and, and our mission, they train us to never use money that designed for something, for something else, unless the supporter agree. Mm -hmm. You cannot do that. And that's integrity and money. And then he said, okay, yes, you can use it for that. And he said, do you need more money? I'm like, what? I said, yes. He said, how much? I said, 65 grand. He said, or you, you, de you definitely know what you're doing because what you're saying is a lot of money. Gonna cost a lot of money. He said, is that what you need? Is that what only money you need? I said, okay, what's going on? And I said, that's the only money I need. I said, if I get 20,000 right now, I can buy the first half of portion of what I need to buy to get ready for the mission trip. And he said, 20,000. I said, yes. And I heard him and his wife said, yes, hallelujah. They're like, I'm like, what's going on? And I said, what's going on? He said, Philipson, yesterday me and my wife was praying. We fell together, God tell us to give you $20,000 for something that's going to happen. And then we wanted to believe ourselves. We, we have the check and the table since yesterday. Waiting for your call with the pin next to it. We said, if you ask for $20,005, we'll not give it. It's not what God tell us. If you ask for $19,999, we'll not give it. But if you say $20,000, we are going to give it. He said, when you call, my wife run. Income. We are in speaking about that. We're listening. When we said 65, we're like, oh, it's not, it's not that. But it's so hard that you call while we're waiting. And then you said 20000 And it's like, come meet me in two hours. I'll give you the first 20000 <laughs> Are you kidding me? I, I, I'm walking, I'm going to meet me in hell. I don't know. He prayed for me, he gave me the check, he said, here's, here's the 20,000. I believe God gonna, gonna um, provide you with the 40,000. And I'm like, I don't look at it. Put it in my pocket, I'm like, is it really 20,000? I don't know. So he said, be safe. He said, be safe. Like, it's a hard time in Haiti. People are robbing people. People are surviving. And, and it's a storm. Be safe. Don't worry about the money. If you feel your life is in danger, leave everything and come back. And I'm like, oh my gosh. And I, I'm going home. I'm driving back to the, to the mission base. Still don't look at the, the check. I go to my wife. I said, I'm going to look, look at that check right now. Can we look at it? And they're like, yeah. <laughs> it's 20,000. like, ah! <laughs> somebody's work. And I said, God, what do I need to do? Click a message come on my phone. A guy I haven't talked to for 10 years, guys. No, not 10 years. Since 2010. And that was, I was there in 2016. He texted me and said, hey, Philipson, there's a storm in Haiti. Are you doing anything? I said, yes. He said, do you need money? And I said, yes. He said, I'm sending you $6,000. <laughs> You can give $6,000. I didn't know he can give $6,000. <laughs> and I'm like, okay. And then I said, 
God, what do I need to do next? God tell me, call Megan. Do you know who Megan is? A girl that I disciple in our discipleship training. That have nothing to do with anything. But I felt God tell me, call Megan. So I was at, uh, I was at uh, Target. Target or Walmart, was Walmart. And I called Megan. And I said, Megan, uh, I was praying about that Haiti trip, and then God told me to call you. I don't know why. He said, where are you right now? I said, I'm, I'm Walmart. He said, what are you doing? I said, I'm buying gloves for the trip. And Megan said, oh my gosh, Philip son. I put a team together <laughs> of 15 people to go to a really fucking Haiti, and we feel like we cannot go, and our leaders not even to, for us to go if we don't have a contact in Haiti that know the place because they're watching the news and Haiti is going crazy right now. They don't want us to go without a Haitian leader or someone that can stand for us in the ground. And I said, what do you mean? Hmm. Like, if I want to go, is that my team? said, is your team, baby? I'm like, ah! <laughs> That's like multiple pastors and leaders come together. They, and I'm like, oh my gosh, like my brain is going nuts. Like less than a week. And I said, okay, if I want to go in Israel, who do I want to go with me? I already have 15 people, guys, in the next three days. 15 people that are going to go in that trip with me in the next two days. I tell them I have $20,000, uh, that's with almost $30,000. And they're like, oh my gosh. They're like, okay, let's buy a ticket together. We, you have a team. However, people you want. I call my friend, he's an he's a Asian guy, one of my best friends. He's one of the guys I tell you, if I, if I, I can die for, really. And I call him and I said, hey, God is doing that crazy thing, man, you need to come with me, you will not be there. I tell him the story, and he's going like, ah! Yeah. Because he's like, I'm going to come. He's a, a cameraman guy, and he's an accountant. I said, I need you to come, and I'm going to give you the money. You did it with me, because when I'm in Haiti in that chaos, I will not be able to deal with the money. And he's like, Okay, he said, you get it, I'm coming. He said, what do you need? I said, well, I still need another 30 grand because it, it, it's, it's 65,000. He's like, okay. He said, okay, I don't know. I, he's like, pen, you still need a lot. And I said, yes. He's like, but I'm down. I said, okay, thank you. 10 hours later, the next day, he texted me and said, Philipson, you will not believe what happened. I said, what? He said, you have 30 grand. He doesn't have money, guys. I go to his place before. He's living in one room with his dog. He doesn't, he's not a rich guy. He's working normal job like you guys. And he said, you will not believe. I send a message out, tell the story, and tell people like I'm going to that trip, and I'm sorry if I just bump in the trip like that. This is what God just is doing. We need 30 more grand. Two church write me back. Two pastors, each of them promised 15,000. The entire money was raised in one week. 65 grand. But when I look back, it's all come with like saying yes to the Lord to get to know the person next to you. If I never following God and call that man in the street, I'll never miss it, know that he can give that money. I'll, you see how many blessings that I take like, even when I ask forgiveness for him, I take like the goal was for me to bless him. You see how many more blessings comes after just because I get to know him. How many people in your school right now that will have a complete different life if they were to hear me speaking today? How many people in your neighborhood, you see them up from the window of your house? How many girls? How many boys? You see, but you never go say hi to them. You never bring them a gift, try to be relationship to relationship with them. Because in America, you just don't do that. Go to Mexico. Hi, mommy. How are you? Yeah, your neighbor. Hey, how are you? Oh, you're in the country? Yeah, I'm in the country. And how are you going to say two weeks? You can come here in my house. Yes. You come to America? Mm. Mm -hmm. You see your neighbor? Mm. Mm -hmm. Nothing. We be led by the culture, but we need to be led by Jesus' culture, and Jesus get to know people. My heart for you tonight, I completely speak something else that I was going to speak about. But my heart tonight is to, you guys, each one of you, you recognize that you can change this nation. You recognize that you can be the next revivalist in this nation. 
You're fully equipped for that. More than you think. It doesn't take much. It just takes a lot of love. A lot of value of others. I want you guys to not to be more than David. I want each of you to have like 12 disciples following you. Where is your 12? I know you think you're shy. You're not. All of us know how you are when you're in the shower. You're scared outside. When the shower, like, oh God, no, are you my hair? I keep for no, my hair, like, you, like you, you didn't blow up my shower. Uh, there's no shyness in you. You're scared of people because you don't know who you are. But the moment you know you, you, who you are, that you are the ball changer, you are a carrier of the God's, Jesus Christ's love, you are the leg that this person wants to have a better life, then you know what you can give, then you find your place in the destiny and the purpose of your life. Guys, and I want you to be the next youth that are gonna go after the 12. You must have people following you and see like, I wanna be like Madison. I wanna be like, I wanna be like, I wanna be like her because she's, she's just such a good person. I wanna be like her. Or even she's not a good person, but I wanna be like her because I see she's trying to be like a good person. Even she don't, she don't show herself as perfect. And I know I'm, I'm broken, so I can relate with her. You don't have to be great. You just need to have the will. That's true, Isai. You just need to have the will. I want you to be the one that changed your school. You must be. You are the reflection of Jesus to the school. The school is dying. People are killing people in America. People are dying, are, are killing themselves because this world, they don't see the value in this world. They need that little light. People don't know what to do. Everybody's doing drugs. Do you know why people do drugs? So they can find some satisfaction and they can get themselves out. If some of you do drugs, you know when you do it, when you're mad, when you're depressed, and when you want to be happy. Everybody is looking for what you have. And you must give it away. And to give it away, you need to break the culture of America and you must build relationship. Even you get slapped in the face. I go to his eyes and say, hey man, I want to spend some time with you. Who do you think you are? Sorry, I just, I love you, man. You're awesome. I want to get to know. No. Then, okay. He said, if you come talk to me again, I'm going to punch you. I don't need to talk to him. I can send him a letter. <laughs> I, I, I see his backpack. I put a letter. Don't put your name. Put a letter under it. He doesn't know who. I'm straight up. Do that for a year. The guy received like 40 letters in a year of how awesome he is, someone that's been looking at him and doesn't know who you are. And one day said, hey man, you know I've been giving you those letters. I just want to get to know you, man, and I love you. You're so awesome. He's, he, the wizard is scared of me is because so many other people betray him and destroy him. And he's scared to open up. But if he knows your heart, he will open up to you. He will want to be close to you. So there is a million ways you can show your heart. Can he delete your video when you send it on Facebook to him? Yes, after he watch it, then the message get out there. Mm -hmm. Like, we must go after and leave the culture behind so we can, so we can win this, the kingdom of God forth in America. And I'm calling each one of you to that tonight. Jesus started at 12. All of you is more than 12. Let me pray for you. Father God, thank you so much for those, each one of the people here, God. <sighs> I know they are not here for no reason. If you give the opportunity for me to come speak to them, God, it's because you have a purpose for their life. Something that's going to bless this nation and also bless them even more. God, I pray that you will continue to give them revelation. So much they have to learn. But God, I pray that you will lead them through the, to the path. As they come together, those meeting nights, those youth groups will not be the boring place. It will be a place where they come, they know that I'm coming to hang out with brothers and sisters that love me deep and I love them deep, that know each other, that can support me when I make mistakes, that I can be vulnerable. If I, if I do a mistake yesterday, I can't be vulnerable here because they're not going to condemn me. 
and God, we can walk together as the body of Christ and forgiveness and love and unity and bring your love to this nation and every area of our networking, this field that we're working. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.